Alright, shalom brothers, shalom. Alright, before I start, I want to just give all praises to the Holy Spirit, who is also known as wisdom, knowledge, also known as Sophia. I would like to give all praises to the Holy Father, which is Yahweh Sabaoth. I would like to also give praises to my brother, <clears throat> Yahweh Shai. All right, now in this reading, we're going to go over the serpent in the garden regarding the enmity between your seed and her seed. Now, in order to actually understand this, you have to use precept upon precept. All right. So precept upon precept doesn't just mean precepts in the 1611, but precepts in the other scriptures as well. So in this case, we're going to use, we're going to put 1611 and the Nag Hammadi together so we can understand exactly what they're talking about. And also, we're going to um, use another chapter in Genesis regarding Jacob and Esau. So it's they're, they're actually telling you everything in your, in our face, but it's all about wordplay. All right, the wordplay throws everything all off. Okay, so we're gonna start off. We're gonna read. Before I read this part, we're gonna read the Nakamati first. We're gonna give the origin of the serpent because there were two serpents. You had the actual serpent, which was the animal, and then you had the serpent of old. Aha! <laughs> the serpent of old, which was Yaldabaoth. You had the serpent, which was the animal, and you had the serpent of old. All right? Now, if you don't know about the serpent of old, you're confusing yourself with just the one serpent. But before then, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna go through the Nagamati first, and we're gonna read the origin of what happened, so we can know exactly what's going on. Because when this book alone right here, it's not gonna make sense. It's not gonna make sense. If you're gonna go off by your own interpretation just using the 1611. You have to put the other scriptures together to make the whole story. You feel me? You need the whole story so you can understand what's going on. Reading bits and pieces is not gonna, it's, it's, it's not gonna make sense to you. All right? So, in the Nag Hammadi, as I swear, this, this, this hit me, I think, what, four days ago. Everything made sense after this because it's just, everything just added up. All right, so we're going to read the nature of the rulers. This is where, this is where all the description is at here. All right, then we're going to go back to Genesis, Genesis uh, chapter 3. Okay? All right. <clears throat> the nature of the rulers. The real nature of the authorities. Concerning the reality of the authorities. The great apostle. Through the spirit of the father of truth referred to the authorities of darkness and told us our struggle is not against flesh and blood but against the authorities of the world and the spirit of wickedness i have sent you this writing because you have asked about the real nature of the authorities <clears throat> the blind demiurge the leader of the authorities is blind. Because of his power, ignorance, and arrogance, he said, with power, I am God, there is no other but me. When he said this, he sinned against the realm of the all. This boast rose up to incorruptibility. And a voice answered from incorruptibility and said, you are wrong, Samael, which means blind God. His thoughts were blind. He expressed his power, that is, the blasphemy he had uttered, and pursued it down to chaos and his mother, the abyss. Chaos just, mean, just means darkness, people. It's just out in space. We'll keep going. 
At the instigation of Pistis Sophia, she established each of his offspring according to its power, after the pattern of the eternal realms above. For the visible originated from the invisible. Incorruptibility looked down into the region of the waters. Her image appeared as a reflection in the waters, and the authorities of darkness fell in love with her, but they could not grasp the image that appeared to them in the waters, for they were weak, and what is only of soul cannot grasp what is of spirit. For the authorities were from below, but the image of incorruptibility was from above. This is why incorruptibility looked down into the region so that by the Father's will, she might bring all into union with the light. The creation of Adam and Eve. The other half. <laughs> the rulers made plans and said, come, let's create a human of soil from the earth. They formed their creature as a being entirely of the earth. These archons have bodies that are both female and male, and faces that are the faces of beasts. They took soil from the earth and formed their human after their own bodies, and after the image of God that had appeared to them in the waters. They said, Come, let's grasp the image by means of the form we have shaped, so that the image may see its male partner and fall in love with it, and we may seize it with the form we have shaped. They did not understand the power of God because they are powerless. Samael blew into his face, and the human acquired a soul and stayed upon the ground for many days. The rulers could not make him arise because they are powerless. Like storm winds, they kept on blowing that they may try to capture the image that appeared to them in the waters, and they did not know what its power was. All these things came to be by the will of the Father of the All. Later, the Spirit saw the person of soul upon the ground. The Spirit came forth from the adamantine land. It descended and made its home within him. And that person became a living soul, and the spirit called his name Adam, since he was found moving around upon the ground. A voice came from incorruptibility to help Adam. The rulers gathered all the animals of the earth and all the birds of the sky and brought them to Adam to see what Adam would call them, that he might give a name to each of the birds and all the animals. The rulers took Adam and put him in the garden, that he, may, he might cultivate it and watch over it. They commanded him and said, You may eat from every tree in the garden, but do not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Do not touch it, for the day you eat from it, you will surely die. They said this to him, but they did not understand what they said to him. Rather, by the Father's will, they said this in such a way that Adam might eat, and Adam might not perceive them as would a completely material person. The rulers plotted together and said, Come, let's make a deep sleep fall upon Adam. So Adam slept. The deep sleep they made to fall upon him, and he slept, is ignorance. They cut open his side like a living woman. Then they reappeared. Then they repaired his side with flesh in place of her. And Adam had only a soul. The woman of spirit came to him and spoke with him, saying, Arise, Adam. When he saw her, he said, You are you have given me life. You will be called the mother of the living. For she is my mother. She is physici physician, woman, one who has given birth. Adam and Eve in the garden. 
The authorities approached their Adam. When they saw his, his female partner speaking with him, they became aroused and lusted after her. They said to each other, Come, let's ejaculate our semen in her. And they chased her, but she laughed at them because of their foolishness and blindness. In their grasp, she turned into a tree. And when she left for them, and when she left for them a shadow of herself that looked like her, they defiled it sexually. They defiled the seal of her voice. And so they convicted themselves through the form they had shaped in their own image. Then the female spiritual presence came in the shape of the serpent. The instructor. The instructor. The Holy Spirit. The female spiritual presence, this is talking about Sophia came in the shape of the serpent, the instructor. The serpent taught Adam and Eve and said, what did Samael say to you? Did he say you may eat from every tree in the garden, but do not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil? The woman of flesh said, not only did he say do not eat, but also do not touch it. For the day you eat from it, you will surely die. The serpent, the instructor, said, You will not surely die, for he said this to you out of jealousy. Rather, your eyes will open and you will be like gods, knowing good and evil. And the female instructor was taken away from the serpent, and she abandoned it as something of the earth. So the serpent, the Holy Spirit went into and was able to speak like she was able to possess the serpent's body. Okay. They eat from the tree. The woman of flesh took from the tree and ate and she gave to her husband as well. And thus these beings who had only a soul ate. Their imperfection became apparent in their ignorance. They recognized that they were stripped of the spiritual and they took fig leaves and tied them around their naked bodies. The leader of the archons came and said, where are you, Adam? For he did not know what had happened. Now in Genesis, (laughs) we all know this part. Right now, how wouldn't he not know if he was omnipotent? If this was Yahweh Sabaoth, he would know everything. But the leader of the Archons, which was Yaldabaoth, he did not know what happened. How would he not know what happened if he was Yahweh Sabaoth? So this is Yaldabaoth, not Yahweh Sabaoth speaking to them in the garden. This is the serpent of old, Yaldabaoth. Adam said, I heard your voice and was afraid because I was naked, and so I hid. The ruler said, why did you hide unless it is because you ate from the only tree from which I commanded you not to eat? You did eat. Adam said, the woman you gave me offered me the fruit and I ate. And the arrogant ruler cursed the woman. The woman you gave me offered me fruit and I ate. And the arrogant ruler cursed the woman. The woman said, the serpent deceived me and I ate. The rulers turned to the serpent and cursed and cursed its shadow so the holy spirit was not in there anymore but he knew the holy spirit dwelt in there because this is they he's he dealt with he dealt with her before okay 
in my other in my other videos I've shown where they have actually spoken together. All right. So that it was powerless, and they did not know it was a form they themselves had shaped. From then on, the serpent was under the curse of the authorities, not of God, but of the authorities. The curse was on the serpent until the perfect human was to come. The rulers turned to their Adam. They took him and cast him and his wife out of the garden. They have no blessing, for they are also under the curse. The rulers threw humanity into great confusion and a life of toil, so that their people might be preoccupied with the things of the world and not have time to be occupied with the Holy Spirit. All right, now we know who the serpent was in the, in the garden, okay? <laughs> it wasn't the devil. No, it was the Holy Spirit who was inside the serpent body to help Adam understand what was going on, okay? Why would you not want to know good from evil? <laughs> All right, now, now we know what the serpent was. Now, here we go. We're going to do this, okay? I'm in Genesis chapter 3. Here we go. The serpent deceiveth Eve, man shapeful fall. God arraigneth them. The serpent is cursed. The promised seed. Remember uh, uh, Ishmael and Isaac? Isaac is of the seed of the promised. Okay? It's, everything is right here in the face, but it's like, if you don't pay attention, it'll just fly right over your head. But here we go. The promised seed, which is us, the punishment of mankind, their first clothing, their casting out of paradise. Now, the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God, not the Lord of hosts, the Lord God only. Normally, they say the Lord of hosts or the Lord your God, but then here it says just the Lord God. You got to pay attention to the words had made and he said unto the woman and yeah had God said ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden and the woman said unto the serpent we may eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden God hath said ye shall not eat of it neither shall ye touch it lest ye die and the serpent, which is the Holy Spirit, inside the snake, which is the instructor. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, And ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and the tree to be desired to make one wise wisdom knowledge wisdom knowledge she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat and the eyes of them both were open and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God, and not the Lord of hosts, not the Lord your God, but of the Lord God. This difference, this is y'all to Baal. Walking in the garden, in the cool of the day, walking in the garden, really I thought earth was his footstool. Hmm? Walking? I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. Walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam, his, and, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where are thou? Really? <laughs> Wait a minute. Think about this, guys. Like, really? This is gone long enough. Think about this. 
and the Lord God, not the Lord of hosts, not the Lord our God, but just the Lord God, which is Yah Debeoth, called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? Really? Where are you? How are you supposed to be a God in your own garden and you don't know where every, what? Are you serious? That's not our father. This is Yah Debeoth, guys. Where art thou? Come on now. He is not omnipotent. And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou was naked? How did he not know? Who told thee? Really? You're supposed to know these things, God. Hast thou eaten of the tree? Whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? Really? Now, why is he asking this? But when we go to later in the, later on in the book, our father knows all. He knows everything. He knows what we're going to do, when we're going to do it. And that's why he set punishments. And he knows everything. This thing doesn't know shit. He doesn't know shit. You know why? Because he is not Yahweh Sabaoth. That is not him. Come on. And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. Who told thee that thou was naked? Has thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, the woman whom thou givest to be with me she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? Pfft, you don't know? <laughs> and the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, which was the shadow, because the serpent is not there anymore, but he knew she was in there. Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and about every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shall thy go, and dust shall thy eat. All the days of thy life. And I will hear, now here's the thing. We're gonna do this right. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman. This is between thy seed and the woman's seed. Here you go, you're gonna say, and between thy seed and her seed. Now, we all know that we we go by our fathers. We go by the house of our fathers. The seed carries the man. The seed carries the line, not the woman. But the woman can carry a seed, but the man carries the seed line. She Whatever the woman's baby's in, she that's the man's seed. So it says, Thy seed, which is the promised, this the seed of the promised, and her seed, which was Cain's seed. Cain's seed. Why wouldn't he say between your seed and Adam's seed? He said her seed, because now you remember my other videos, I told you how Yad Nebaioth and the other authorities raped Eve and had a baby by her, by and had a baby named Cain. Cain was Yad Nebaioth's son. So he said, I'm going to put enmity between your seed, which was the Holy Spirit, which was in Adam, and her seed, which was the seed that he placed into Eve and came out Cain. And it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. It says, It shall bruise thy head, and thy and thou shalt bruise thy, his heel. Okay. This is telling you exactly what's gonna happen. Now, remember Jacob and Esau. Esau came out red and hairy all over. And then comes Jacob and he grabs hold of Esau's heel. 
he grabbed hold of Esau's heel and I'm pretty sure he had a nice tight grip which kind of bruised it. In Midi, Edom and Jacob, Esau and Jacob, Esau and Jacob, I will put enmity between thy seed, which was, which thy seed, which is the seed of the promise, which is Jacob, and her seed, which is Esau. This is spiritual now. This is spiritual. This is spiritual, guys. This is all spiritual. Thy seed, Jacob, and her seed, Esau. And it shall bruise thy head, and thou, and thou shalt bruise his heel. But you would have never understood this without the Nag Hammadi to understand who, who the serpent was actually was. And remember, the line of our, the house of our fathers, not the house of our mothers. He would have said his seed, not her seed. All right? Bam. That's it. He was talking, the serpent of old was talking to the serpent who, what, which was the Holy Spirit was in. The Holy Spirit led them to knowledge because she was knowledge. They call it the tree, the tree of the tree of wives, or something like that. <laughs> but anyway, that's all I wanted to read for today. Um, the next video I'll make, I'm going to actually read the whole book of the secret, of, uh, the, the whole chapter for the secret book of John, so we can get everything in its whole entirety, so you know exactly where the Holy Spirit came from. Remind you, this Holy Spirit was the 12th Aeon Sophia. You have the actual divine mother, which is the actual Holy Holy Spirit from the Father, the All. And then you have the Holy Spirit, which is wisdom. All right. They're all, now all of the Aeons, they're all, they're all Holy Spirits now. They're all Holy Spirits. You have 12 Holy Spirits. Okay. But then you have one divine mother spirit but then one of the 12 Holy Spirits, which is knowledge, all right? We just don't think just there's one spirit and that's just one, that's the one Holy Spirit and every other spirit, there's just something else. No, open your mind, stretch it out. Read between these lines. It's telling you right in your face. It shall bruise thy head and thou shall bruise its heel, Jacob. Jacob shall bruise Esau's heel. No more talk. <laughs> Peace.